What's up, Poker Beast? Kato here, and today we're playing cards, but somewhere very special. We're in Austin, Texas, at the Lodge. Let's hit the felt. Welcome back to the vlog, Poker Beast. Today we are at the Lodge. I've just landed in Austin, Texas, drove up to Round Rock, and bought in for $300 after a long day of travel. It's about midnight. I play on the stream tomorrow. I just want to get a practice session in and get comfortable with the rules of the room and the chips. As expected, there's a lot of action at my table, and I'm excited to get started playing Texas poker for the first time ever. I look down at Ace King Offsuit. I'm in the low jack, 297 in my stack. This is a 1 2 game, but it does play bigger. With two people ahead of me, I put in a bet for $20. The hijack decides he wants to play, and the under the dumb player who limped makes the call. We're headed three ways to the flop, $65 in the pot, and the dealer spreads the board. Four queen six. Ace king whiffed. Once again, we're all used to it. It's okay. When it checks to me, I'm going to continuation bet $35. I only get one player that wants to come along. It's the hijack. He calls immediately. We're headed to the turn heads up. And the dealer drops the king of spades. A beautiful card. I've hit top pair. It's disguised. I'm going to continue betting. With 135 in the pot, I want to entice him to call with weaker holdings. Any queens. Any pocket pair between sixes or queens. Maybe even a pair of sixes. I bet $60. My opponent doesn't take too long. He decides that he's had enough. And he tosses his hand away. I'm scooping my first pot ever at the lodge. I've got 377 in my stack. The blues are $1, the reds are 5 and the white are tip chips. They don't play, they're for the dealer. At the lodge and throughout Texas, you can straddle under the gun for any amount you want, and you can even double straddle if you want to. The under the gun player has put on his straddle $20 in the 1-2 game. This is the first of a few rules I'm not used to. The middle position player makes the call, and I look down at beautiful pocket aces. Of course, this is a wonderful situation. I'm on the button, a massive straddle. I go to make a bet. I'm thinking about 60, I'm thinking about 80. I've only been in the room for about 10 minutes. I'm really not sure what to do, but it doesn't matter because I crossed the line with a certain amount of chips. And in Texas, whatever crosses the line stays in the pot. I definitely have bad habits with this. It gets me a lot while I'm here in Texas, but the bet's $90. It works out perfectly, though, because the player to my left, the small blind, ships his entire stack in $199. It folds around back to the straddle, and he goes all in as well. What is going on? Everything's bigger in Texas. The middle position player makes the call. We are four ways all in after I make the call. 643 in the pot. And we're going to a full card run out. Will my aces hold? There's only one way to find out. This action is fantastic. I'm excited to be here. I am exhausted. But when you get aces, you perk up a little bit. The short stack in middle position flips over jack, 10 of diamonds. The dealer burns in turn. 6, 8, 6. A great flop, in my opinion, so far. No clubs, no nines, no tens. No, a four of hearts on the turn and the river. The 10 of spades. The small line flips over king, jack of hearts. No good. I flip over my aces. And the player to my left in the small blind reluctantly holds up his ace-king offsuit. I'm scooping the pot with my pocket aces holding. I've always heard of Texas hospitality, but this is really going over the top. Tip chips are also new for me. You can't take a drop, you can't take a rake, and you can't take players' chips. It's part of the Texas law. I like it. All the money stays on the table. I'm sitting with 813 in my stack, and in the eyes of a ranger, that's pretty darn good. I'm excited to take my channel to the next level, traveling out of state to bring you fantastic content, if you can drop a like and show your support, show your love, help me grow this channel, it would be much appreciated. The next time I get is pocket sevens in the cutoff. There's a straddle on the pot, $5. Both the middle position players make the limp. I could put in a bet here, but I don't mind set mining. There's usually going to be a raise anyway, so I just decided to make the call. The button makes the call. The small blind calls, and the big blind makes a move, raising the pot to $15. The under the gun player makes the call. Both the middle position players call. I call, of course, the button and small blind all call. Seven players want to see the flop and win the $104 pot. I'm hoping to spike my seven, of course. Anything else, I'm probably going to get out of the way. The flop comes nine, eight, ace, three diamonds. I do have the seven of diamonds. I have a backdoor straight flush draw. But what are the odds of hitting a straight flush draw? Come on, let's be real. It does not happen that often. The original better decides to check, gently tapping one finger on the table. It checks around to me. I, of course, am going to check. Maybe we'll get a free card. The button slams $20 into the pot, saying, No way, Jose. Let's thin the field. The original better, the big blind, makes the call. Folds around to me. I'm going to come along. $144 in the pot. $20 to call. Let's see the turn. I'm kind of going for glory here. I need either a 7 or to get one step closer to my straight flush. Yeehaw! The 6 of diamonds giving me the open-ended straight flush draw. This time, the big blind decides to lead. She grabs the two green chips, flicks them into the pot. $50 to make the call. I could re-raise here, but if I re-raise and someone decides to push, I'm going to have to fold. I won't be able to see the river and realize my equity. Also, I find that when someone donk leads on the turn, it seems to be a value and protection bet. Their nervous is going to check through. It's not a large bet, 
and so I put 50 in. I make the call. The player behind me folds. We're heads up to the river. It's a 10 of clubs. It gives me a straight, but not my straight flush. This time, my opponent bets $100. Any diamond above my 7 beats me. There is $264 in the pot, but I just don't think I have the winning hand. I make the fold, and she's gracious enough to flip over king, queen of diamonds. She flopped the nuts. If I hit my straight flush, we would have gotten stacks in. It could have been a massive hand. This is session number one of the trip. Session number two is the live stream game. I'm going to go over every single hand I played over the next few videos. And I flogged every single session that I played while in Texas. You're going to see them all. I had some ups. I had some downs. It was an exciting time to say the least. And best of all, it was a massive learning experience for me. Stepping out of my comfort zone, playing deeper games, experiencing a different poker culture. The Texas poker culture, which is becoming world famous for deep stacks, aggression, and bomb pots. The next hand I get is 2-4 of clubs. I'm in the big blind. The hijack limps, the button limps, the small blind completes. I check, we're headed to the flop four ways. Eight, six, queen comes out on the flop, two clubs. I don't have a very good flush draw, but I do have a flush draw. The small blind leads out for $10. I'm gonna make the call. I need to see the turn, but I have to tread cautiously. I could easily be beat if a club does call. The hijack makes the call. We're headed to the turn, $38 in the pot, and the dealer drops the five of spades. I've picked up some extra outs thanks to the double gutter. But once again, it might not be a good straight. But when it checks to me, I'm going to take the initiative, take the aggressive line. I bet $35. That's a pot size bet. The hijack makes the call. The small blind gets out of the way. And then the river comes. It's the seven of diamonds. I do hit my gut shot. I have a straight. It's the bottom end. I check over to my opponent. I'm going to go into check call mode. We're not going to show down that easily. She is coming for blood. She grabs a stack of red chips, drops them into the pot, starts cutting them out. I can't tell how much they are, but it's going to be $70 to make the call. 178 in the pot. When I think of the value hands she could have here, I'm thinking 9, 8, 7, 9, queen, 9, but not much else. When I think about the bluffs, she could have had any combination of clubs, although I am blocking a few ace-x combinations. Straight draws that became weak pairs. She seems to have a lot more bluffs in her range, but it doesn't really even matter. My hand's just too strong to fold. I make the call. She tosses her hand over. I can't see it from across the table, but it looks like clubs. It turns out to be jack three of clubs. I'm glad my club didn't come. I would have been destroyed. The deck made like hay and bailed me out on the river. I'm scooping a nice little pot. My chip army is getting bigger and bigger. 881 in my stack, and I look down at ace queen of clubs on the cutoff. What a beautiful hand to see. The hijack is limped. I decide I'm going to bet $20. It's been pretty standard at this table. The button looks at his cards, grabs four reds, tosses them into the pot. He's coming along. The small blind says I'm coming too. The big blind's not going to be left out. $82 in the pot. Four-way action. And the dealer burns in turn six, nine, jack, two clubs. I'm sitting with a nut flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. When it checks to me, I'm going to put in a bet. I want it to be a larger bet. Two-thirds pot is what I decide on. That way I can build the pot. So if I do hit a club, I can get stacks in. I put $50 in the middle of the pot. My opponents are stone cold. They're all interested. It's on the button. Is he going to raise? Is he going to fold? No, he's just going to make the call. Two greens go into the pot. The small blind tosses two greens in as well. And the big blind wastes no time calling the $50. We've just put $200 in on the flop. I'm just looking for a club. The dealer burns. Drops the turn. It's the 10 of spades. I thought it was a club for a second. But no, it's okay. It's not what I wanted, but I did pick up a bunch of extra outs. I now have an open-ended straight draw. If I hit my king and someone has a queen, I'm scooping stacks. If I hit my club, I have a feeling there is another flush out there. I could check here, hope it checks around, but no, I need to continue telling my story. I need to continue putting pressure on the pot. What's a good size? I'm going two-thirds again, make it $200 to call. We're back on the button. He counts his stacks. And he quickly makes the call. Very interesting. Doesn't want to shove all in on me. Doesn't want to fold. There are two players behind him. Is his hand super, super strong? Or is he drawing and he just feels like he has the right odds? Is he hoping to get pushed on so he can push over the top? If someone pushes over the top, am I going to make the call? I think absolutely I am. I'm here to play. I'm here to gamble. And I have such a strong hand. The pot is ballooning. We've all invested a lot of money into this pot. The small blind makes the fold. The big blind makes a fold. We're heads up like gunslingers on Main Street. 7 a.m. sharp. Tumbleweeds rolling past as the town folks run for safety. You can hear the shutters close. Who's going to pull the trigger first? I'm hoping one of my outs drops. But no, it's the 7 of diamonds. I'm sitting with ace high. 682 in the pot. 611 in my stack. My fingers are flickering over the holster. Do I have it in me to pull back the hammer and fire a bullet? I didn't come all this way to roll over when the going gets tough. I decide I'm going to fire. The question is how much... 
looking back, I should probably just jam my entire stack. The only problem is I have way fewer eights in my range than he does, since I was the preflop opener, and he called me on the button. It's the same concept I talked about earlier. I have way more bluffs in my range here than I do value hands. Really, the only value hand I can represent is king-queen. I bet $450 into the pot, and my opponent goes into the tank. He thinks for a long time, huffing and puffing, he really is on the verge of folding, and then he reveals to me what he has. He flips over the seven of clubs, and then the eight of clubs. He has a straight. I cannot believe he has that strong of a hand. I can't believe he's even thinking about folding. I wish the club would have come. That would have been really nice. But still, he's not calling. Is he good enough of a player to make this fold? Of course not. He tosses in a chip and wins the $1,600 pot. I am devastated. He was at the very, very top of his range with that one. I'm a little frustrated at myself. I could have just played it safe. I had a really nice winning session going into tomorrow. Now I'm down, but I'm not out. I scooped a few quick small pots and I decide not to top off. I know I'm buying a deep tomorrow. I don't want to get myself into trouble tonight and throw me off my game tomorrow. Ace King offsuit is the next hand I get. I'm under the gun. I make it $15. I probably should have gone 20 or maybe even 25 with the way the table's been playing. Offsuit out of position, I would have liked to size a little larger. The low jack and the hijack call. Everyone else folds. We're headed three ways to the flop. $48 in the pot. The dealer goes to put cards on the board. Ace, queen, eight. All spades. I have to tread carefully. I do want to protect my hand, so I'm going to be putting in a bet. I go with $20. I think it should have been a little bit larger. I'm just scared to get raised in these situations. The low jack makes the call. What do you do when you have top pair or top two pair on a suited board like this? Let me know. Hijack's no longer interested. We go to the turn, which is the nine of diamonds. I'm going to continue betting. Once again, my bet is a little small. I'm not sure if I'm going for value or protection. You know, you really have to have an idea of what you're doing with your bet. There has to be a purpose behind it. I'm betting 40 into the pot like a deer in the headlights. The dealer grabs the chips. Let's the opponent know what the bet is. If I get raised here, I'm just going to have to make the fold. But he decides to call. We're going to the river. It's the seven of spades. Not good. Four spades on the board. I'm going to check this one over to him. Basically giving up. Luckily, he checks back and flips over. Pocket tens. No spade. I'm scooping a pot with my pair of aces. Suited flops are something I really don't enjoy playing. I need to get better at them. Let's talk about it in the comments and grow together on this subject. Because I'm pretty clueless. But at least I'm scooping another small pot on my way back to the green. And back in the green I am. 318 on my stack. If you haven't subscribed yet, join the family. You got nothing to lose. We're having a great time. We're growing together. We're becoming better poker players together. I've got a lot more videos from Austin coming up. You're not going to want to miss them. I just beat Pocket Tins. Now it's my turn to play them. I'm on the button. 318 on my stack. And the low jack puts in a bet. She makes it 15. The cutoff decides that's not enough. 32. Let's bump it up. He's been playing tight. I'm assuming he has a premium. I've never seen him three bet. I really haven't seen him play any pots. I'm going to make the call, of course. I would maybe three bet here myself. Most likely I would, but I'm not going to four bet. The small buy makes the call. The low jack comes along. We're headed four ways to the flop. $128 in the pot. Let's go, baby. Let's hit a 10. Let's hit our first set in Texas. Queen, king, six. I miss. It checks around to the three better. He makes it $115. I have no other choice but to toss this hand away and take the L. It's about 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm really tired. I think it's about time to go home. I was up big at one point. Now I'm about even. It's okay. It was a warm-up session. I'm starting to feel comfortable. I'm ready to play tomorrow. It's kind of a bummer for my first session to be a loss, but it's going to be okay. The next time I get is queen nine of hearts. The low jack bet 15. I made the call. The cutoff makes the call, and then the button grabs... Six chips, and min raises to 30. The under-the-gun player throws in 25. He wants to play. The low jack completes. I complete, and so does the cutoff. 153 already in the pot, and we're headed to the flop. 8, 10, king, two hearts. I have a gut shot straight flush draw. The second straight flush draw of the night for me, but this one I hold two of the cards. I check to the original raiser. It checks all the way around, and the turn is the jack of hearts I have binked. My one outer. I have hit a straight flush on the first night in Texas. I checked to the cutoff who bets $30. And then the button min raises again to 60. It folds back around to me. And what do I do here? My first instinct was to re-raise. Of course, charge the ace of hearts. Charge any straights. Charge sets two pairs. Charge them all. But then I thought the player on my left has had a active night. He's been very aggressive. Maybe if I just make the call here, he'll put in the re-raise. The problem is I'm going to the river first act, 
How do I pile the most money in this pot? I decide I'm just going to do a flat call. Looking back, I don't really like this play. Although I have the absolute nuts and typically you'd be just hiding in the high grass. I think that I should have pushed the action here. The player that originally bet folds, he must have had nothing. We're going to the river. And it's the ace of clubs. This is an action killer. Any hand worse than a straight shuts down here and I'm blocking the queen. I'm not liking the ace at all. It really makes me wish that I would have pushed the action on the turn. But I decided I need to push the action now or he's going to check right back to me. I'm just going to ship it all in and hope he has the goods. I have a straight freaking flush on my first night in Texas. I can't believe it. Unfortunately, he tosses his hand away. 10 jack offsuit. Although it's two pair, it's not very strong. Even on the turn, he may have been able to find a fold if I push the action on the turn. I go to show the hand, but no, I muck it. I wanted to make you all proud and not share any information. I had already announced to the table that I was leaving. I just happened to get lucky and win this hand. I don't want to use up all my luck. I need some of it for tomorrow for the live stream. So I rack up my chips and I head to the cage to turn them into cold, hard cash. In for 300, out for 510, for a profit of $210. Thanks for watching. Cato out.